Welcome to the Real Andy of Beverly Hills Show. Hello, Beverly Troop, and welcome to the Real Andy of Beverly Hills Show. How are you guys? It is Wednesday. It is the middle of the week. Happy hum day to every single one of you. How are you guys? Girl, I mean, today I'm going to be fly because we have so many, like, pieces of tea that we need to discuss especially of course on the bravo verse that i'm like i don't know how i'm gonna put everything together on a one hour show like it's just insane but you know what we're gonna make it happen we're gonna make it happen because we need to talk about everything you know like um of course i'm still thinking about april 15 monday you know it was a very hard day on the bravo verse uh, but girl, I mean, it's it has been like non-stopping, non-stopping. Um, I have okay. So we're gonna be talking, of course, about the Bravo verse first. We're gonna be talking about Real Housewife of Beverly Hills. We're gonna be talking about um, Anne Marie embarrassing herself. We're gonna be talking about Real Housewife of New York. We're gonna be talking about Real Housewife of Miami because there is a mess happening right now over there. Of course, we need to talk about Vanderpump Rules because, I mean, Sandoval is being Sandoval, you know. And we have also some news about Schwartz and his new official girlfriend, you know. So we're going to be talking about that. We need to talk about the Real Housewife of Dubai because, girl, what is happening in Dubai? Mm -mm -mm. And, of course, we're going to end up with some tea from the Real Housewife of Orange County. Then... We are going to be going down to the pop culture streets because we need to talk about Vanderpump Villa. We're going to be talking about um, Olivia Moon. We're going to be talking about the Royals, our your favorite topic, to be very honest with you. And uh, we're going to be talking about Katy Perry as well. And you do not want to go anywhere before the end of the show because we have our breaking news and they are juicy. Okay, juicy. All right, guys, so with that, bring your tea, bring your blanket, and get ready to talk about this mess. It is time to open our portal, and let's go into the Bravoverse. All right, guys, welcome to the Bravoverse. And we have so many things to talk about today that I'm gonna try to go through them as fast as possible, okay? So let's start talking about the Real House of Beverly Hills because yesterday was a mess, okay? Let's talk about Anne-Marie Wiley because 8.5, she literally like become like 1.5 uh, yesterday. It was so embarrassing and everyone was talking about it. So as you know, sadly, 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 Bravo made a horrible, horrible mistake of letting go Crystal Minkoff, right? And of course, the first person who was out there to celebrate was none other than Anne-Marie Wiley. So she decided to post something about karma, some, some, you know, some BS like that, you know, the usual. Crystal, honestly, she doesn't even think about Anne-Marie. She doesn't even, like, that that girl is so far away from Crystal that she doesn't even care about her, you know? But of course, Anne-Marie, like, she's really trying to milk this situation as much as possible. It's like she was on half season of Beverly Hills, and I think that's going to be her whole personality moving forward, you know? Um, but then the funny part is that a couple of uh, fake inst um, X accounts, you know, decided to start tweeting under Anne-Marie's um, message to Crystal, you know? And it was so funny. So one of them, let me just open here. So one of them, actually, uh, it was trolling her, of course. And the first one said, you know, uh, don't dish it if you can't take it. And another one says, worry about your transphobic RP's husband, you know? And 
girl. I mean, I remember like watching because I mean, of course, the the candle is very similar, you know. Uh, the picture is the same picture, but like Crystal has nothing to do with any of this, right? So um, I, when you look very fast, I was like, oh my god, Crystal, yes, girl. I mean, do it. Look, I am not mad, you know, if Crystal will decided to do something like this, but of course, she's not gonna, she's not gonna, you know, get down to Anne Marie's level. Uh, it was just fake accounts. Well, Anne Marie, being you know Anne Marie, not double checking facts, not even like like realizing anything, she thought that this was actually Crystal Minkoff, and then she decided to like clap back, but not only clap back, but like hit below the belt and like really go nasty. I can tell you, Anne Marie could easily be like a person that she has a personality like Kelly Dodds, to be very honest with you, you know, and her husband, just like Kelly Dodds husband, like they're just that kind of people, you know? So, um, Anne Marie replies and says, false allegations against athletes are easy. Anyone with actual money knows that you worry about your husband, the Lion King, and your brother, with a snow emoji, we, we all know what that means, for that matter. Oh, and that video of you blurting out the end war getting out. Fake, woke, racist. Hashtag bring it. Hashtag Real Housewife of Berry Hills. Not only she is replying to a fake account, you know, which is not Crystal Minkoff. She actually tagged another fake Crystal Minkoff account. So this girl doesn't even know what she's doing. Like at this point, Crystal is living her best life, not knowing that Anne-Marie is literally fighting with a wall. <laughs> like this girl is going crazy, you know, being mad, being like, ah, 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 you know, and it's all fake people you know and Crystal is just living her best life honestly it was so embarrassing the worst part is that of course everyone was trolling Anne Marie you know and everyone was tagging her telling her like girl this is fake this is fake this is not Crystal you know by the end of yesterday the the post was still there you know which to be very honest with you guys, I found it extremely defamatory. She's talking shit about Rob Minkoff. She's talking shit about uh, Crystal's brother, you know, and uh, of course about Crystal. If I was Crystal, I will sue. I will be, fuck a bitch. You want to do this? Let's do this, okay? Let's talk down because whose husband is the one who is being accused right now of doing all of those nasty things to multiple girls. Mm? Which one? Which husband is the one who is against basic human rights? Mm? Okay, so I don't think she wants to go there. Anyway, so that is going on. I don't know if we're gonna get some like development later today, but girl. Mm -mm -mm. Now, talking about Real House of Beverly Hills, uh, now there are two openings, you know, and there has been a lot of talk of who is going to be joining next, you know. There was a lot of talk about the, this uh, Hilaria Baldwin uh, situation, which it was basically a rumor. But I can confirm you, yes, that she actually uh, met with producers of The Real Housewife of Beverly Hills. So there is no worry if she's going to join or not. You know, we're still in very early stages. But the meeting happened. She literally said, I will move to Beverly Hills with all of my kids to be on this show. So um, it's always a possibility because she is, you know, friendly with Kyle Richards. So I have no idea. You know, a lot of people are saying like, oh, no, this is such a bad idea, you know, because, you know, her past or whatever. But at least, uh, if you really think about it, maybe she is controversial enough to be on Real Housewives? Maybe, you know, and she needs the coins, so she will definitely be messy. She will definitely be messy. 
Now, according to our friend Zach Peter, there are two new housewives that are actually set to join the show. Um, and they are like nobodies, you know, like not nobodies, but like, you know, like they are not on the public eye you know they're just like these new random housewives okay um now i feel that that might be also okay you know maybe some fresh blood will bring you know a, a, a new turn because again i don't know what are we going to be watching next season to be very honest with you I feel that I don't want to see Erica with her wannabe pop star career. Like, that's boring. Uh, and she's broke, you know? So, like, why? Uh, Dorit Kemsley, you know, she also allegedly broke. So, like, like, where is the class? Where is the money, you know? We only have Sutton and Garcelle, well, of course, and Kyle, who actually have, like, a lot of money. So we need, this is supposed to be Beverly Hills. This is supposed to be like, you know, luxury. You know, I want everyone spending the same amount of money. I don't want anyone like free floating, you know, you know, and, and doing all of this free shit. No. Okay. We don't need that. Um, so let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what is going to happen and, and who is going to be uh, joining the show. But fresh meat, I think it's very needed. You know, now two new housewives. Please, please do a good job. No more Anne Marie Wiley's, no more Diana Jenkins, okay? Like someone that is actually entertaining, someone who is actually down to get a little bit messy, not toxic, okay? There is a difference, and who has a lot of money, okay? Maybe a husband who will get into the mess. I love when husbands uh, get into the mess, you know? Husbands, kids, and moms. You know, uh, when people are like, oh, they, they should not get in the middle. Girl, you know that the drama is better when they get in the middle. Okay. Um, all right. So that's it from uh, Beret Hills. Now let's move on into the Real Housewife of New York. Because yesterday there was these rumors going everywhere that um, Rebecca Minkoff is going to be joining the Real Housewife of New York. Uh huh. We have another fashion model join, allegedly joining the show because it has not been confirmed. And now we're thinking like, okay, is she going to be like friends with Jenna Lyons? Is there going to be a, a rivalry over there? Now we don't know if she's going to be joining as an Apple holder or as a friend of the show. Now, when Bravo announced the return of uh, Roni this season, they actually put a picture with 10 apples. And that made everyone believe, oh, we're going to be getting a big cast, kind of like Miami. Miami is working so much right now that they might want to replicate that, okay? However, Miami has three friends of the show, you know, and like seven housewives. So <laughs> it's going to be like, uh, it, it is a lot. So I don't know if they're, going, if, if they're doing that on New York, if we're going to be getting even more people um, but this Rebecca Minkov, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, uh, she's an American fashion brand. She has an American fashion brand, you know, uh, that was founded by her and her sister back in 2005. Uh, the brand has retail stores in New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Korea, and is distributed in over 900 stores worldwide. Okay. The Rebecca Minkoff brand carries a wide range of apparel, including handbags, footwear, jewelry, and accessories. So you know that she's going to know what she's talking about. It, again, interesting that they're going to get into this whole like fashion line because that could be very much New York's theme. You know, you know, kind, kind of like every franchise has like a little like a little team, you know, uh, in the back. So I think this could be um, New York's thing, you know, because we have Saida Silva, which is a fashion influencer, of course, Jenna Lyons. And of course, now we, ha we have um, um, Rebecca Minkoff. So that could be interesting. It's also interesting that it's all she's also a Minkoff, like Crystal. Maybe, you know, that meme where it says that, you know, when one Supremes fade, the other ones, you know, arise. 
I'm gonna miss Crystal so much. Girl, I hate when they fire my favorite. I honestly hate it. Um, anyways, um, okay, so that's happening on Brony. So let me know in the comments below if you're excited for the next season of The Real Housewife of New York. Now let's go and talk about The Real Housewife of Miami. Girl. So you know that Alexia is going or is going to start to go into this whole divorce. I don't know how messy is going to be. But let's just say the fact that he filed for divorce out of nowhere and she didn't even know kind of like it's going to give you an idea of how messy this divorce is actually going to be you know what i mean so um now adding to the fire of this divorce is none other than anna king Quoses, okay you know that she hates alexia and marisol with like a passion you know well, now some texts, some DMs got leaked coming from Anna, where she is alleging that the divorce between Alexia and Todd is fake and that is just for the cameras and that is just so Alexia could get a storyline moving forward. So I'm going to read you the DMs. Uh, she says, that's what I thought, but I, but make no mistake, the cast shakeup and the divorce are related. And the timing of the inevitable split is for, for tweet oh, shit, that's a big word. For tweets, for twitches, for twitches. That's in a moment, guys. And a little too coincidental. When your head is on the shopping block and someone is done with you, they are usually willing to help you stay employed. Who is blindsided by a divorce these days? Papi doesn't want to pay alimony, so he'll be the bad guy and give you your storyline. Period. End of the story. Girl, I can already see Alexia going crazy over this. Um, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know. I don't believe that the divorce is fake. So I don't believe that uh, the divorce is going to be fake. To be very honest with you, Alexia, um, she loved this man so much. Now, there, is pro there was a problem in paradise. Maybe, you know, I don't think he just woke up one day and was like, mm, I think I'm going to file for divorce today. Of course, maybe something was going on. And I do believe that it might be related to his um to his finances you know i think he might might lie about his finances i think that he might make her believe things that maybe were not that true i don't know i always always had such like an ick you know feeling when it when it come to todd you know i don't know like i was happy for alexia but i never really thought that that you know he was the guy um for Alexia. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait and see. But to say that it was all for a storyline, I to be very honest with you, I don't think that Alexia was never on the shopping block. You know, I know that there was going to be like or there is going to be a shake up, but if anything, you know, I heard that Marisol was the one on the shopping block, which kind of like made more sense. But Alexia has been really constant, you know, into giving us good storylines. So I don't see her having to create a fake storyline in order to move forward. But you're going to have to wait and see what is going to happen over there, right? Okay, so let's talk now a little bit about the Vanderpump Rules, okay? Last night episode was, I mean, a little bit crazy between Sheena creating a new song, you know, and the whole mess of Tom Sandoval uh, talking about Raquel and all of that. Um, Girl, the world is talking about how James Kennedy deal with Tom Sandoval. And I think, look, Tom Sandoval is never going to take any accountability for anything. It's wild to me that after everything that he went through, he's not capable of just taking accountability, you know, or if just saying like it was my fault or if just saying absolutely anything. He still believes that the war is against him that he is just another victim on this situation. And it really blows my mind. Look, you know that I am not a fan of Raquel Rachel. You know, I, I hate that girl, right? 
Well, I don't hate her, but like I dislike that girl, you know, so much. But for Tom Sandoval to say that Raquel Rachel used him and then dispose him, girl. <laughs> First of all, I don't think anyone used anyone over here. Both of them had like this horrible affair. Both of them were like banging while Ariana was grieving her grandmother and her dog, you know. Both of them are horrible people. You know, I mean, if I was Tom Sandoval, I, I, I will be saying both of us were disgusting, you know. They actually kind of like weirdly in a weird way deserve each other. But you know what? Because both of them are such narcissists, I feel that that's why also like it doesn't let them be together. Okay. And, uh, you know, they're talking about Raquel, talking about how she never loved him, how she never wanted, like, really wanted to be with him, you know. Um, also, I think it's wild that Tom Sandoval is talking about this with James Kennedy. It's kind of like you really, like, also betrayed James Kennedy. So why are you telling him all of these things? And then you're going to end up the whole conversation insulting him by saying, like, Oh, go play bottoms on your little laptop. It's like, bitch, do you even know where James Kennedy is right now? Like, James, James' career is in such a path of success that it's insane, okay? He's literally playing at Coachella right now. And where is Tom Sandoval with her little, you know... If you think that Erica Jane is a wannabe pop star, like, Tom Sandoval is even lower than Erica Jane at this point on the pop star scene, okay? At least Erica Jane has actual singles. He is a karaoke singer. Like, it's wild to me that he thinks that he is this supreme rock star when he has not been doing absolutely anything to actually be one. Girl, too much, too much. I mean, the war is, of course, grilling him. And on, on this one, I have to agree, you know, you know that I am not team any of them. So like F them. But anyways, that's what is happening. Now, let's talk a little bit about Tom Schwartz because officially he is finally showcasing his new girlfriend. OK, his new girlfriend, Sophia Escoro. And um, he is looking so happy. He was on Watch Happens Live. They talk about it, you know. They talk about, of course, the situation with Joe. Um, he's basically saying that when it comes to Joe, like he, she's just a friend. She's just a friend. You know, they had a little bit of benefits here and there, and of course, like Joe, like messed the whole thing in her head. But they, he never, like he says that he was very clear that he never really wanted a relationship at that moment. You know, he was. He says that he was very messed up, that he was really trying to work on himself. Now, when it comes to Sophia, apparently they are completely in love, you know, and that that's why finally they are putting like, you know, putting it out there. Now, they were also at the uh, Nick Vile podcast the other day, you know, and they definitely says that she overlooks all of his baggage, that he just loves him, that, you know, he doesn't feel like he is, because a lot of people are giving him shit because of the age gap, you know. But the thing is that he is not, he was not looking for young girls on a bar, you know. He says, like, I am not that creepy old guy who is going bar to bar looking for young girls. Actually, she was the one who reached out to Tom when they met at Tom Tom, you know, and she was the one who pursued him to be together, you know. Now, apparently they have been together for a little bit over five months and they are extremely, extremely happy together. And uh, to be very honest with you, the Tom Schwartz that we saw, what that we are seeing on Vanderpump Rules looks very much beat up you know, and like not in a good place. But the Tom Schwartz that I saw last night on Watch What Happens Live, it's so different. He looks so good and healthy and happy, you know. So if this girl is bringing, it, bringing him all the happiness, well, I'm here for it. You know that I love Schwartz. 
and I actually want Schwartzy to be very happy. So if uh, if this girl is gonna be the one for him, go for it. And it's not like she's 15, okay? She's like 20 something, so like, girl, calm down, okay? Um, so that's what is happening on Vanderpump Rose so far. Now, let's talk about, um, oh, I wanna, before, I'm sorry, before we go, let's talk a little bit about this that he said about Joe. He says, Joe is a human being. Joe is a light in my life. I want to clear things up. Joe was never living with me. She was staying with me sporadically. She's not my girlfriend. She never was. We had a whirlwind romance, but we are just bots now. Yeah, definitely Joe didn't get that, that message, you know. Maybe now, you know, let's, let's all remember that this was filmed like six, seven months ago. But like, girl. Anyways. Uh, let's talk about Real Housewife of Orange County. Jennifer Pedranti, you know, she got engaged this week and congratulations to her. But now she's also fighting her ex-husband to get alimony, to get child support. You know, they ha she has been going through this divorce for a while and, you know, there are new developments. Okay, so Jennifer Pedranti's uh jennifer pedranti i'm sorry according to new documents that were obtained by radar online uh is asking court for help getting her ex-husband to turn over financial records and she demands child support and spousal support okay so um the reality is a star explained that there was an upcoming hearing and that she did not agree to the extension she demanded william pay sanctions in the amount of one thousand nine hundred dollars for his actions Jennifer said her estranged husband initially claimed to pull in around $39,000 monthly on income for two businesses. However, she says he now claims to not have any income from the two businesses. So apparently the guy does not want to pay anything. Um, the only thing that I have to say about this is, okay, of course I agree that he has to pay child support because girl you know like those are your kids even though apparently he pays for the health insurance and it's like four kids uh but i i do believe that you know he has to pay some kind of child support right now when it comes to a spousal support i mean i don't know like i love jennifer i think she's a great housewife you know but didn't she cheated on him <laughs> You know, with Ryan. <laughs> so, like, I, I mean, I could not ask for spousal support, to be honest. And also, is, isn't this a thing? I'm sorry, I'm not a lawyer, but isn't this a thing that when you are, you get married, you lose this spousal support because now you have a new spouse. So, like, the other one doesn't have to give you any spousal support. So, is she fighting for the spousal support of all of this time? up to the wedding or or does she wants to get a spousal support after she marries ryan i don't know but i am a little bit you know weird i mean i think it's a little bit weird about the spousal support about child support i agree a hundred percent i don't know but i am not a lawyer so let me know what you guys think in the comments below now last but no least let's talk about the real housewife of dubai girl dubai as a city right now is a mess, okay? Not the Real Housewives franchise, the city. I don't know if you have been watching the news, but Dubai basically tried to play God and got fucked hard, okay? So uh, they are doing this thing that is called um, cloud seeding, you know, which basically is a way to create clouds so it rains, you know? Yeah, that's a technology. It has existed for a very long time you know they don't do it on like many places because it requires a lot of factors you know to it's not only like oh i'm gonna create a couple clouds you know and then a little bit of rain no it really plays with the whole environment of a whole place so apparently they did a little bit of cloud city because it was getting a little bit hot in dubai you know and then someone messed up someone definitely got fired but like girl apparently they created a whole storm that has that over the course of two days almost destroyed dubai girl this storm was so hard 
and it rained so much that they got the amount of rain that Dubai usually got in two years, they got it in two days, okay? And of course, the infrastructure of Dubai is not made for this amount of rain. It's the desert, it never rains, you know? So everything is flooded, malls are destroyed, the airport was underwater, like the whole, I mean, I, I'm sure that you have seen the videos everywhere. Well, now, of course, as soon as this happened, I have to reach out to my girls. So I reach out to my girls of Dubai because you know that I love 99% of them, you know? So I was like, Brooks, what is going on? Sarah, what is going on? Stanbury, what is going on? Chanel, what is going on, you know? And um, I saw some of the stories, you know, I have some like responses here and there. Um, hopefully they are all okay, but some of them got hit really, really hard, you know? Uh, especially, I don't know if you remember, but Nina Ali, who is no longer on Housewives, but she was on season one. Um, she, her, her house got hit so hard. Fortunately, everyone, it's okay, you know, and she's literally out there being a, like a spoker person for all of these, being like, look, the only thing that we lost were material things, so thank God that we can replace that. But there are so many people out there who are losing everything that they have, you know? So, um, and she's trying to like put all of this out there. Um, yeah, her house got messed up. Now, um, Chanel Ayan, her house was okay, but apparently her office, bad, okay, as well. And then they're going to have to like redo the whole thing. Uh, Caroline Stambori also like a lot of like, I mean, she didn't have damages into her house but like outside it was like a mess you know um i'm just hope that every single person out there in dubai is being safe you know and like you guys please stop playing god you know i know that you are like the richest country in the world or something like that you know and that you think that you can do whatever you want and create these humongous buildings but like girl okay like at least if you're gonna play god try to do it right you know what I mean? Because this thing, I don't know, it was cows. I don't know if you watched the videos. At some point, even the clouds were green. I was like, what is happening over here, you know? Anyways, yeah. So let's pray for everyone in Dubai. And thank God all of our girlies from the Real Houses of Dubai are okay, given the circumstances. All right, guys. With that, it is time to close our portal to the Bravoverse, but don't go anywhere because now it is time to go down into the pop culture streets. All right, everyone, welcome to the pop culture streets. Girl, they are screaming today with the amount of tea that we have. Where are my fans of Vanderpump Villa? Girl. Vanderpump Villa is honestly going to be the next huge success. That show, it is so damn good. Like, I want to see at least 10 seasons of this show moving forward because put below deck with the amazing touch of Lisa Vanderpump, girl, we have the best show ever. Now, that doesn't mean that the people that are on the show are amazing because, girl, I just saw last the, the last episode. What a mess what a mess i love that if this was real life so many of these people will be fired so fast but of course it's reality tv of course they need to like keep some of these messes you know in but girl i am so over marciano and eric i mean the level of unprofessionalism of these people are insane like i just i can't you know it's just too bad I'm so sorry. Hannah crying for this asshole. I'm like, what are you like? What are you even attracted to with this guy? This guy is a complete asshole to you. He disrespect you. He kiss other people all the time. He doesn't give a shit about you. And here is Hannah defending him left and right until she finally did it. You know, but the girl, the worst part is that Hannah doing everything that she was doing with those guys next day. It was not because she is an empowered woman, you know, it's not because she can buy herself flowers. Oh, no, no, no. It was all to make him jealous. 
Like the toxicity is just on another level with these two. The worst part is uh, if you are, you know, kind of like putting all your faith that Hannah will see the light, it's not going to happen because a couple episodes ago, uh, Marciano went live, you know, and they were together. So, yeah, that's how toxic this shit is. You know, at some point, I, I, I want, I, you know, you want to, like, save Hannah, you know, but at some point, it's like, you're just playing dumb, you know, like, girl, I can't. Um, I don't know. I, I think that... Um, Everyone also was like, all of these guys were losing their shit when the girls were finally getting crazy. And I was like, especially, it really surprised me for from Andre, you know? Yes, I know that he might be a little bit jealous because what is happening with um, Gabrielle, I think is her name. But, girl, between him and Eric being all like, oh my God, these girls are so thirsty. Oh my God, what are they doing this? Oh my God, how could they? Like, oh my God, it's like, Bitch is the exact same thing that these guys have been doing with all of the other guests, okay? So stop with the sexism, okay? Let them live, let them do whatever they want, okay? And shut up. I mean, it was like a little bit annoying to be very honest with you. Eric, I cannot stand Eric. I can't, you know? I mean, I'm like, girl. But anyways, there are so many things happening on Vanderpump Villa that I remember last week I I tweet and I was like, you know, Hulu, I know that this is not Bravo, but you better, you better be giving us a reunion. I'm so sorry, but now reality shows get a reunion. The reunion is how you give us closure. It's how you let us know what really is going to happen at the end of the day. Well, according to the Vanderpool Villa uh, fan page, we are getting a reunion. Uh huh. And I am so excited. They posted a picture of like a beautiful set and they're saying we are officially getting a reunion. Oh my God. I am so excited. I mean, I'm hoping that it's actually really happening. But like, girl, we did it. We did it. I'm so sorry. There is no finishing a show without a reunion. Period. That's why I'm usually so obsessed, I'm upset with Below Deck. Because they don't do reunions. And I'm like, I will, be, I will be doing a reunion and I will be even bring, bring the guests. Okay. But let's see. Let's wait and see how Lisa is going to be uh, making this reunion. Um, another little uh, note that I wanted to do is that just like in Below Deck, in Below Deck, they fire people, you know, and they always can't find new people to come. I feel that that's something that Lisa needs to be looking into for next season you know because you cannot have someone breaking the rules and you just keep them because look marciano kiss i guess that's a big no-no okay that's like fire him immediately but because he didn't got fire then the next day we have gabriella also kissing a guess so now everyone is going to be breaking rules left and right this is the thing with hospitality uh, businesses. If you do not keep them like this, they will do whatever they want to do. I know because I have been on the hospitality business for very, very, very long time. You know, like, so anyways, but I'm very excited that they're going to be getting uh, uh, allegedly their own uh, reunion. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about Olivia Moon because girl, she opened up to People Magazine about the sad news that she had, you know, um, she had uh, breast cancer and that she had to go, you know, and had like a whole surgery and all of that. And she did an interview and it was so, um, not heartbreaking. Like it's a mix of heartbreaking with also like empowerment, you know, uh, to see someone going through this it really makes you think about how like how precious life really is you know um she says she opened to people about her double mastectomy leaning on into his her partner john uh during her recovery and what she wants women to know about preventing breast cancer the actress was diagnosed with 
bilateral breast cancer after a test revealed she had luminal BA fast moving aggressive cancer in both breasts. She was two weeks away from starring a new sci fi film in Germany when she was diagnosed. And she says, You realize cancer doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care if you have a baby or if you don't have time. It comes at you and you have no choice but to face it head on. I mean, it's so true. You know, now she is, I mean, she's better and everything, you know, but it, this is just a call for everyone, you know, that you have to take care of yourself, your bodies, uh, do your checks, you know, girls go and do your checks every month, you know, because you never know. And this is, this could be very bad, you know, but also it could be very preventable. So, yeah, let's all pray for her and that she keeps uh, being um, okay, you know? All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit about Katy Perry. Katy Perry had a massive uh, wardrobe, wardrobe malfunction, you know, on American Idol, on the set of American Idol. Uh, literally, her top, she had this huge metallic, like, shed, going on you know and it kind of like break and it was very funny they fixed it i mean they, they did the whole thing you know um the only thing that i have to say about katie perry is like girl stop doing american idol now <laughs> look i used to love american idol you know but like lately is like first of all who is still watching american idol and second of all who even knows who are the winner of american idol i don't even remember i think i stopped watching when paula abdul left the show and Simon Cowell, because that was the good American Idol, you know? Like, there, after that, it was just so, like, bad. You know, we don't really have any big winners anymore. We don't have any, like, really good stuff happening. Now, I don't know, I mean, as you know, Katy Perry is finally leaving, you know, uh, American Idol after, I think, seven years. And I think it's so good because Katy Perry, I love, love, love Katy Perry, and I love her music so much. But, like, she needs to, like, start focusing on herself, you know? I know that she was an American Idol because she had, a, uh, you know, her kid and she wanted to be close to her kid while she was growing up and all of that. But, like, girl, it has been seven years, okay? And now we don't know if she's going to ever have the same success that she had before. This is the thing with these singers, you know? You stop, you lose. I don't know. So I'm hoping that she is really... Like getting back into her roots and really gave us all those amazing bops that we used to love. Because I honestly love almost every single song of Katy Perry. Um, so let's wait and see. Um, there is actually one of the uh, fun uh, like stories, story time here. Is that I won some like years ago. I won uh, a ticket for a private concert of Katy Perry when she was doing her, you know, YouTube thing like a little reality show that she did on youtube and seeing her sing like right here girl katy perry is so talented and it was so good I, I think if you look for it on youtube you can actually see me on uh, on the thing you know like uh, the camera passed in front of me like many times but it was such a good show it was an amazing amazing time so i want her to return to that, please gave us good music. <laughs> All right, guys. So now, before we leave the streets, it is time to make a left into Royal Avenue, girl. The mess, the mess. Okay, so I don't know if you remember this, but a couple um, months ago, there was this guy who is one of Meghan Markle's like friends, you know and biggest like also fans and he was claiming that kate middleton cancer was fake mm -hmm. yeah he was claiming that you know but that was like two months ago you know and he says i personally do not believe kate middleton had or has cancer his name is jonathan perkins the worst part is that he is the director of race and equity in the university of california right so it's actually kind of like someone and he's saying all of these things you know and they're saying and he was saying that 
he was wondering if the Princess of Wales was even still alive. You know, saying that maybe she was just like in a coma or like just like unalive, you know? So I was like, oh my God. Like the conspiracy theory going to like another level, you know? But when I see that it's actually someone with like a career and like an important career, I was like, girl. But not only that, now two new journalists are coming forward supporting these claims, saying that they do not believe that neither Kate Middleton or King Charles actually have cancer. And that this is just a whole production to make the people like the royal family again, because there has been no secret that after Queen Elizabeth passed away, everyone is like, do we really need the monarchy you know so like it, the like the likability of the monarchy has been really going down and they're saying they're alleging that this is all fake just so people are like you know empathetic with the crown and like being like liking the crown again girl the only thing that i have to tell you is that the crown in on netflix they better get renewed for another season, okay? A couple more seasons because we need to know what is happening now. Like, I mean, the mess is just too big. The mess is just too much. Now, do I believe that? To be very honest with you, I do. I, I choose to not believe those conspiracy theories. You know, I think it will be a very horrible thing that someone is faking something as serious as cancer. So I do not believe that King Charles or Kate Middleton will do something like that, you know? Especially Kate Middleton. I don't think that she will put herself to something like this. So actually shame on all of these people who believe something like this because this is like a big deal. You know, Kate has kids. Kate has a husband. Kate has, you know, a family. And I don't think she will be putting all of that in jeopardy over this i don't know i don't know i mean to i'm too very honest with you but like to see actual professionals talk about this it's like girl a little bit too much i don't know so anyways let me know what you guys think on the comments below right but don't go anywhere because we might be done with the pop culture streets but now it is time for the juiciest part of the show and that's it our breaking news Breaking news, everyone. Are you guys ready to hear what is happening like right now in this moment, bitch? We have two pieces of breaking news right now. So the first one is a couple of days ago, it was reported that Beth Midler actually was gunning to get a spot on The Real Housewife of Burry Hills. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever, ha, 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 like, that will never happen, you know, all of that thing. Girl, when I'm telling you that apparently the rumors are true, not that she's going to be joining, because I don't think that that's going to happen, but that she really, really wants to be part of the Real Housewife of Burray Hills, okay? Apparently, she is tired of seeing people getting all of this fame while her career is pretty much stopped you know at this point so she wants a piece of it and she says that she has a lot of shit to talk about and that she is ready to be spilling all of that tea um according to a report the singer and actress has launched a desperate bid to reignite her career but making a play to be the newest Barry Hills housewife, okay? Insiders are claiming that she is tired of seeing her once a scintillating career. What? Why they use those big words? Anyways, head towards obscurity while talented turkeys like the Kardashians hog the spotlight and million dollar paydays. Girl. 
I mean, I would love to see Beth Miller on the Real House of Beverly Hills. Like, don't get me wrong. But isn't she like 80 years old? Like, she's like 78, although she looks amazing for her age. At this point, I will be like, just like enjoy the fruit. I don't think Beth Midler needs money, you know? So like, is this because she wants to like feel like useful again? Or like, what, what is it behind this? I don't know. It will be very funny to see these girls deal with Beth Midler. Now, I don't think she will ever join as a diamond holder. I don't even think that Bravo will do that just because of the age difference and you know it kind of like wouldn't make sense but you never know you never know i mean beth miller is beth miller so imagine her like really bringing it for the cameras like imagine her like coming for erica jane you know and calling her all kind of like names or like you know like just saying shit. i, I mean if you think that someone with money is good for the show because they just don't care, now imagine someone who is extremely successful, who doesn't really care if, you know, she gets blacklisted in Hollywood because she's 80, what is she going to be doing, right? And who has all the money in the world. This girl will bring the biggest mess to this show. This girl will call out everyone and their mothers. So I'm kind of like here for it. But I could see her being like a friend of the show, like kind of like a Kathy Hilton. But I think that, you know, Beth will be like, fuck it. I'm just going to destroy this whole shit, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting that we're seeing like this going on. What a moment in life to be part of the Real Housewife fandom, you know? It's getting like better and better, you know? And uh, I love it. I love that these big uh, people are now wanting to be part of uh, the show all right now let's talk a little bit about gypsy rose girl yesterday you know gypsy rose um said that one of the reasons that she was divorcing her husband was because he was like a hoarder like a fridge hoarder or something like that and because he's nor and like all of these weird reasons that i didn't get right well today we have her ex since to be ex-husband saying like girl the only reason why you want to divorce is because you want to get back with your ex girl. i mean apparently there is a little like a triangle a love triangle happening okay because her soon-to-be um ex-husband is accusing her of reigniting some kind of romance with her ex-fiance ken orker back when she even was in jail you know um i'm going to read you this because i want you guys to have all the all, all the facts you know uh, this is coming from tmc and it says sources with direct knowledge are telling tmc that gypsy's stepmother christy received a call from Gypsy gypsy's ex ken orker sometime in january right around the time the first season of her lifetime show aired, and we we're told he wanted to clear the air or sources say Ken told Christy he wanted to clarify the reason he'd broken things off with Gypsy a few years back. At the time, reports said he didn't like the newfound fame she was getting, but we are told he explained he just wanted to give Gypsy a space to grow. During this chat, we are told Christy asked Ken what, what is his relationship status, and he revealed he was not married but also made it clear he wasn't trying to get back with Gypsy or break up her marriage to Ryan Anderson. Well, Ryan is not buying any of this. Sources are saying that he does in fact think that Ken made that call to Christy in an attempt to reinsert himself into Gypsy's life. Our sources said that Ryan feels like most of the issues with Gypsy really start after Ken Cole, and we are told he believes Ken was the trigger for the split from Gypsy, who now files for divorce to divorce the guy. Whether or not Ken meant for that to happen, we are told he is pissed. There is also this part of the reason Ryan believed all of this was calculated 
had to do with how quickly Gypsy cozied up with Ken after he, she separated from Ryan. Okay, almost after they separated, she went to New Orleans with him. They got like matching tattoos, you know, but they are still saying that they are just good friends. Okay, that they are just good friends and that they are, there, there is nothing happening in it. But Ryan is definitely not believing it. Um, what can I tell you about this? I don't know. I feel that maybe he had, you know, Ken had like a lot of love for Gypsy. Um, I don't see Ryan and Gypsy. I have never actually seen them like together. I mean, never seen them like together forever, you know, and it kind of like make more sense with Ken. But this definitely is a love triangle happening right there, you know, and I feel that the excuses that Gypsy are giving to divorce him are honestly not that strong. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that she is actually like playing these two guys? Like Gypsy girl, maybe you need to be the one who needs to be joining the real housewife next. All right, guys. So that's it for today thank you for watching and thank you for being here um before you go or before we go you know i love to go and give you the vibe of the day because we need to leave this space with positivity and love am i right so the vibe of the day coming from love attraction instagram account it says i'm in love with this quote when you get what you want that's God's direction. When you don't get what you want, that's God's protection. Okay? So listen to that again and make sure that you believe it. Everything happened for a reason. All right? So if it's not, if it's something that you really want is not happening, it's because it was not meant for you. And something better is on the way. All right, guys, so thank you for being here. Uh, before we go, I want to remind you that my collaborations are very much active. All of them, Rose Forever, Liquid IB, Beauty You, all of them. So make sure to go and check them out. Uh, the link is in the description below with all of the discount codes, okay? Also, if you want a personalized message from me, you can book me through Cameo. And uh, you also please check out my merch. Those, all of these are amazing ways to support my channel and you get something amazing in return. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media. You can find me anywhere, everywhere as RealAndyBH. RealAndyBH on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Threads, Vinivia, everywhere, okay? So make sure to check that out. Uh, of course, don't forget to follow, to subscribe to my channel, you know, The Real Andy of Beret Hills, so you get all of this tea every single day. And, of course, don't forget to like, like, like this video, share everywhere in your groups with your friends. We need to keep this family growing. And subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you are new here. You do not want to miss being part of the Beverly Troop. And I'll see you around. See ya! Bye everyone! Bye!